Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys um, a little closer look on the Dehancer Premiere Pro plugin for the film emulations. Um, so in a previous video I showed you guys with Dehancer, um, you can get some film looks on your footage. And so today I'm gonna to jump into some of the settings and some of the adjustments that you can make with your footage. So let's jump on in. All right, so I have this clip here, and it's from a recent trip. I have thrown a Rec 709 on it and done basic corrections. So I'm going to jump into the Dehancer plugin now. So I have it installed. It comes up under the video effects, and you just hit film emulation. You see Dehancer Pro. Drag that onto the clip. Now. With that, you can go up to your effects panel here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse some of these. And now you can see everything right here that you can adjust with the Dehancer plugin. So, input uh, source rec 709. Um, I haven't messed with any of this, but you can adjust your temperature compensation and defringing. So I've jumped into the film the most. Uh, right now it automatically added the Kodak Vision 3250D. But as you can see here, there are plenty of options to go from. You got Ektar 100, you got Portrait 400, 800, Pro Image 100. Um, a lot of these are photography films, um, but you can obviously use them on your video clips to get that look. If you're trying to match your footage up to your photos that you might be taking on film or you just want that unique film look so i've been using the portra 400 and 800 mostly because it comes out very natural and it's very spot on to what the film looks like so now that i've added kodak portra 400 you could uh, push and pull the footage to get a little bit of a different look from the film um, so i'm going to go negative two here now with that done, you can go into Halations. Halations allows you to add some softness and some diffusion to maybe highlights or whatever the light source may be. So you could just adjust them by clicking or you can enter in what you want it to be at. Um, a lot of these, you, um, you'll just have to kind of adjust them and see what it changes throughout the footage. <clears throat> What I'm really excited about is trying out Cine Still 800T and you know the Cine Still look to get that halation that you get when you're shooting the film. <clears throat> so we can go up to the film. Let's go down to Cine Still 800T. So you kind of get that reddish tint to it. And then you can go into the halation and I think you enable it here to really see yeah so you'll enable it and you can start seeing that halation that you get in some in your highlights when you're shooting the film if you ever shot Cine Still 800T has a very unique look so you can amplify it you can adjust the hue local diffusion as you can see, it really intensifies when I did that around all the highlights. So you can get that really unique Cine Still 800T look. You also get bloom, so you can adjust the, the diffusion and everything on the highlights. You can kind of see a little bit change in there. It kind of gets a little softer, um, bumping up that source limiter. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of control when using this plugin to really get it to be the look that you want it to be. You also got false color if you need to see how your overall exposure is. <clears throat> There's film breathing. I haven't really messed with this, so I'm not really sure what it is, but I'll just kind of go down the line here. So you got input, you can uh, add the Rec 709, you got some other stuff in here. You can choose camera, I haven't, I haven't jumped into that. Films. 
So you can see that you get some black and whites, you get some colors, you get some classic Fuji film here, some Ilford, uh, a good range of Kodak. Um, you actually have some Kodak film, like video film on here. The Vision 3 is uh, video film. So you got a couple of those here. You got Ultra Max. And then you get down into some Polaroid, some Lomo Chrome to really change things up. So you have a good a range of films to go from. Um, expand, I'm not really sure what that is. It looks like maybe your exposure levels, yeah. So you can adjust your exposure levels there. Um, print, let's see. Looks like uh, you can adjust your exposure some more there. Color head, you can uh, jump into the RGB and adjust your hues and color. Film grain, that's obviously gonna let you adjust your grain values within the shot. Film resolution, your shadows, midtones, highlights, chroma film type, positive or negative. Halations, we jumped into that. Bloom, we jumped into that. Vignetting, um, you can adjust this outside of the plugin, but it's also in here. You probably have a little more control over it in here. Uh, you got feathering and stuff, which I don't think the vignette in Premiere Pro allows. So, oh, I guess it does have a feathering in there as well. And then we jump down to film breathing. Not sure uh, what that is, but you can uh, probably adjust it and see what it does. Gate weave, false color, output, probably just fully adjusting what the plugin is doing. Yeah, so you can you can really adjust how strong you want it to be adjusting your film. Um, I'm assuming what the LUT generator is is once you get that look that you want and you probably want to just make it a little quicker um, copy and paste all your footage you could probably create a LUT and export it and then you can just import it and use it on all your footage in the future instead of having to go through and make all the adjustments to every clip so there you have it that's the Dehancer plugin for Premiere Pro those are the list of adjustments and settings that you can change up while you're editing your footage if you have any questions on specific settings or any specific thing that I went through that I didn't really jump into, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.